We've just arrived at West Hendon, and I must say, although I've just been told by Mitch that this is rather quiet, to me this is really noisy. I mean, I don't know if you can see, but we're stood um, outside Glynis' mum's house, who's 86, is she? 86 years old, and she has to put up with this all day, every day. 24 hours, I've just been told as well. Yeah. So we're going to give you a little bit more on this uh, in a little while, and uh, hopefully uh, we're going to have a chat with Glynis' mum, and Mitzi, some of the other local residents, and um, get their take on what's happened since Vice were here and since the one show did their show. Has anything changed? Uh, ask a few questions and see what happens. But uh, this is just a, a, a precursor. Have a listen to this. Nice, eh? Now, this is the view out of Glynis's mum's back living room window. Look at that. That's it. That's all there is. This is the view from the upstairs bedroom window of Glynis's mum's. As I say, 86 years old, and this is what she has to put up with. The windows can't even be opened in the flat because of the dust fumes. and the fumes. The place is a hive of activity. Like, there's, you know, you got a fella scaling the walls up there. We've just had a crane bringing over a load of stuff. You might see the cabling running from the crane, which is literally less than 20 feet from the front door so Glynis um, it's been four months now since um, Vice and the One Show uh, did um, a piece on why or what was happening here with the regeneration Great. what's changed anything have, have they have they addressed any of the issues nothing, nothing. Nothing. Um, nothing. I've just been in your mum's house and it's absolutely stifling yeah. in there she can't have the windows and doors open, and that's due to the dust and the, the yeah, fumes. The dust and, and the fumes, but primarily yeah. the cement dust. Yeah. They, uh, they put a notice up saying if your car has cement dust on it, we will come and professionally clean it yeah. because it actually eats through your car. Yeah. But what about the people here that are actually breathing it in? Hang on, it, what, it eats through their cars? Like, you know, it's it, cement dust. Ah. Uh, and they're breathing that. They're breathing this constantly. Right, which is why they have to leave the windows and doors exactly, shut. Exactly. Well, I've just come out of there and it's got to be about 120 degrees exactly. in there and your mum's in there. Yep. She's 86 years old and she can't even come outside for a bit of fresh air. And she can't go around the back because as you can see from the photos... Yeah, yeah, but from what we put up earlier, there's a six foot area before you've got this massive hoarding all the way along so you can't see anything from the ground floor anyway. And you're saying that you can't get round the back now either? Uh, only if you want to walk way down there, cut through, yeah. and go around that way. Which for it's an 86 year old is virtually impossible. impossible. Yeah. Impossible. I mean, just check this out guys. I mean, what co kind of care in the community is there here? Um, I, obviously, we all know that they've got to get these jobs done, but it seems to me that um, there's absolutely no regard for the, the local residents here whatsoever. I was talking to Mitzi earlier and um, she's going to give us a bird's eye view from up on her floor so we can see we can have a look down on what's um, well, uh, 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 at the layout of this but to be honest on a day like this it's got to be about 20 25 degrees out here today even in the shade and the moment you go into um, into the house having the windows shut and the doors shut it's it's absolutely stifling there is no air at all in there and as you can see right over there, I don't think you see in the background, there's your brick dust and your concrete and, um, and rubble that's, you know, in the air at the moment. Well, I've been kindly invited up to uh, Mitzi's floor and that gives us a much better perspective of what you can see going on around here. Um, and again, you know... Yeah, poor builders, they've never been on such a site. No, I'll bet. But I just can't get over the taste in the air of just dirt. And, and dust and I must admit I, I do feel it you know on the lungs yeah it's all there isn't it and we had this jet wash last Saturday yeah and it's back already look yeah, yeah. well it doesn't go I just can't get over the fact that they work seven days a week here you know and you don't get a, day off, don't don't get a single day on, yeah on all the time yeah in the tower block I mean you only it's have there. to listen to it it's there. listen to it Well, I must admit, this was probably a really nice place to live once once upon a time, wasn't it? Before all this. Barrett should be ashamed of themselves the way they're treating the uh, the elderly residents uh, of this, this place. As you say, you're, you're about to lose yours, aren't you? 
Um, and and they, they just want everyone out, really, don't they? That's that's the bottom line. They'd, they'd like to see everyone out. This is my home until they give me what I'd like. Damn straight. Oh, I, just, I just can't put up with this noise. Like It's dreadful. Barrett's, Johnson. This is quiet. Capita, you should be ashamed of yourselves. I just want to get a quick close-up. Right, so what you're saying is two years ago you were supposed to have left here? They, they were supposed to have moved you? Or? No, no, so I bought the plate. Oh, you bought it, right. Yeah, give me a plate, but they... But they're only offering, what was it, half? Yeah, that they've done. Less, less than half. Yeah. Less than half. You. All right, say, we'll say 200 grand. Yeah, but these are... The, the, the cheapest two bedroom lease on it is 407 grand. Yeah. And it's part own, part buy. Part own, part... Uh, equity, equity. Part on it, yeah. So if she left or died. Yeah. That other half would belong to them. Oh, I see. So yeah. it's ah, oh, so, yeah. Uh, so, so oh, she's already paid for her home. Yeah. Outright. Yeah. She has no mortgage. Yeah. Why would she want to go and give her home to a corporation? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but on your dad, their service charge is going to be like a thousand pounds a year. Yeah. A thousand? Yeah. Jeez. Now, they're going to be 1,600. In, so it's going to be up by over 50%? Yeah. Crikey. And where will you find that sort of money? You, you, you won't. And like, if you defaulted on that, they throw yeah. you out. They throw you, really? They, a simple, they throw a simple out. default, simple that, even, even at 86? That, you'll be thrown out. And who, who is it that's... Barrett's. Put, Barrett's Homes. Are doing this is it, and who's the uh, the people behind it in the council? What? Capito, Capita. Capita, that's the name of the fellow, yeah. is it? Yeah. No, no, no. The, oh, no, that's. The, the, oh, the, Capita are the um, the council yeah. um, uh, equity firm. Yeah, Heavies, I'm with yeah. you. Yeah. They're advisors. The They're place. advisors. Yeah, we like that. We've got um, Nazi. We've German. got Lady Smith, who is the uh, site man, uh, who is the sorry Barrett's manager. Yeah. We have Dan Aspic. Yeah. Who is the site manager? Right now, two weeks ago, when I questioned them, these two managers, yeah, um, about the work going on all over the bank holiday weekend, yeah. I said, who, who actually gave authorization for this? Yeah, and it was really strange because neither of them knew. Nobody knew who authorized Nobody the bank holiday knew. work. Exactly, and they worked all over the bank all holiday. Over the bank twenty-four holiday. hour? Twen uh, not twenty-four hours, no. but. But uh, Sunday, which yeah. they're not allowed to, no. and bank holiday Monday. Bank holiday Monday. So basically your, your bank holiday was ruined, yeah, your course. peace and quiet was gone. Whereas they had like, maybe a day and a half piece, Saturday yeah. afternoon, Sunday, Yeah. they had nothing. I yeah. What? Oh, there you are. Watch it. It is a lot, there's a... And there's traffic in and out of here, lorries in and out of here all day. This is nothing. This is nothing compared to what it normally is. From there, uh, down there, the ground floor. Down there, yeah. Can you hear that? Yeah. The lorries are with the engines running. They park with the engines running? Yeah. Well, that must That's stink up the place. Most of them to go and yeah. run So basically you're getting engine fumes through through what yeah. little air, through the little gaps that you have got because your windows and doors are shut. What you are getting is fumes and brick dust. And the house is full of dust. And the house, yeah, well I've, I've literally just wiped a couple of surfaces yeah. and there is a fine dust over everything. Yeah. yeah. Literally, I mean, I won't, I won't show your front door because it shows what number you live at. But um, yeah, there's a fine layer of dust or brick dust, I'd call it, over everything. So of course, and I can taste it in my mouth as well, you know. And I've only been here half an hour, so um, yeah, I'm really, really quite disappointed with the uh, meant rain. Like, I call it. Yeah, so it's liquid when it lands. One yes. assumes, yeah, yeah. And, and it splashes all the cars. Yeah. They're more concerned for the cars than what people live around. And um, they've asked us to get some video footage of the fact that the paths are blocked. If you look over there, you can see that uh, the path over there is completely blocked, so you couldn't walk past it even if you wanted to. Um, and, you know, I mean, considering the, that you've got, uh, you know, elderly, I'm talking 86 years old, you know, that's like 14 years shy of 100, and she has to put up with this. Uh, so, 
I mean, I don't, I don't understand how someone like Boris Johnson could sign off on something like this without a single care for the elderly people that live in these blocks. And if, yeah, I mean, I've looked around and it's everywhere. It's like a fine, fine dust over everything. And as I've just spoken to uh, Glynis's mum, and it's more toxic than asbestos. Yeah, she she said herself uh, her health suffering from it. Look, you can see it everywhere. It's well, you may not get a good. It's supposed to be cleaned every day. Yeah, and they don't do that either. Because she was just saying, uh, Glynis's mum was just saying that uh, the committee have, have found that Barrett's are not even uh, are broken just about every rule in the book. Yes. And nobody's taking them to task. No. Nobody's holding them to account. Environmental is run by Capita. Ah. Capita is a private corporation. And they are there to facilitate their corporations and not yes. to work. And pretty much like the environment. Don't forget, agency. Capita as well is involved in building works, Allington Homes. Right. Yeah, I'm with you. This is Capita. Uh, this this is shocking. Like I, I can't believe this. I mean, you'd think this is this is quite nice, but within a few feet of the back window, look at this. This is your view. Front window, even. Sorry, yeah. Front door at the back and windows and living room at the front. But yeah, this this. I mean, I can reach over and touch that. That's how close it is. And again, with the window open, all you can smell is building dust. And that is the little gap that we showed you from downstairs at uh, Glenys' mum's house. It's a tiny little gap. There's no lighting around there at all. Um, and, you know, it, it, it literally, it's something to not to wake up to, which is like, open your curtains, look out the window, and all you see is hoardings with a sign on saying danger. You know, how, how wrong is Now it's those barriers have just gone across. They um, clearly should have been there when we arrived and once they saw us filming they've slipped the barriers over. But um, yeah, I, I, I think these people deserve better, to be honest. They deserve better than this. A little bit of action wouldn't go amiss. Shocking. Absolutely shocking. Yeah, you gotta love this place. I've literally got to shout over the banging. Look at this. Look at that. I mean, could you put up with that all day? Every day? If you were 86? 80 fucking 6? Well, there's a lot of community spirit here. You know, the, um, Glynis has just done a video with two of the young local residents and uh, they have a lot to say on the matter. The, 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 uh, the, the lorries here, yeah. if there was an accident down here or emergency services had to come down, yeah. what chance have they got? None whatsoever. What yeah. chance have they got? Yeah, I can see what you're saying now. totally, totally unacceptable. Yeah. Totally unacceptable. Yeah. Let's get some... Yeah, I must admit, yeah, it does seem a little chock a block. Yeah. Yeah. He's gone up to him. Oh, no, because he's got his engine running. He's standing in the station, he's got his engine running. Yeah. But now he's moving. Yeah. And he's lived down this way, and, and, and about the community. Yeah, but I've lived in a Larry's Close for like nearly 30 plus years. And my daughter and my family and everything like that. Nice close knit community and everything like that. Um, I was basically pushed into coming over here, but I really didn't want to. I have a disability, my son has a disability. And I was told if I don't accept one of these properties, they'll offer me something. I might not meet my needs, but if I refuse it, they will discharge duty from me. 
So, so really, that's blackmail. Yes, and they sent me notice to quit papers, which I think was done illegally. So um, I'm fighting with that at the moment. So um, where I'm at the moment now is I'm not happy because um, we've been dumped over here, literally. Barrett's built the buildings, and as far as I'm concerned, they have done no safety, equality checks, or anything, and dumped us in here, and everybody's having problems. So could you just um, briefly tell us the sort of problems that different people are getting in this block? Well, when I moved in 18th of May, I had no heat in the hot water for four days. Um, they came round to try and solve the problem, telling me that because I hadn't programmed it properly and all this nonsense, I told them it wasn't working. So I put my immersion heater on and my hot water didn't heat up. So they came around twice with Nathan Smith and one of his plumbers. Um, again, tried to set it, trying to make out that I don't know what I'm talking about. Came back for the third time. Nathan Smith was talking to the plumber in the bathroom on the low voice. All of a sudden, um, he came to me and told me, um, this room in your right, the filter's broken in the radiator. So I went ballistic and say, well, you're lying to me, Nathan, because you told me that all the checks were done, health and safety checks were done, and he proved that it hasn't. There's another lady that lives in this block, pensioner, she feels isolated and alone, um, had a bath, um, unplugged it, a whole bathroom carpet was saturated. When they dismantled it, they found out they found that the pipes were turned upwards. And is this, is, is this the same person that's had two floods there so far? Yeah. Yeah. Now, could you tell me? I believe there's an old lady lives next door to you. Yeah, she's 91 years old. I've known her since my Katrina was about five years old, and she's deaf. And I think she, uh, you know, she's had cancer. Um, she's got a Zimmer frame. And she knocked me the other night because all her electric went out, she didn't know what to do. So I managed to solve the problem. A switch had tripped the electric cupboard and um, she couldn't put it back up because it was so stiff. And then she was explaining to me she's very anxious because she's got a pendant, an emergency pendant, and um, we've got no phone. For how long? Um, well, since I've moved in there, the 18th of May. So from May to now, you've had no phone? No phone. Line? Whatsoever. The old lady next door has a panic button, but she's yeah. got no phone. No. So if she fell... That's what she's worrying about. She wouldn't be able to call anyone? No. Which is absolutely horrendous. Yeah. It's so, just horrendous. Yeah, so um, a friend kind of visits her from time to time to make sure that she's all right. I've told her, can you to use my phone? Come and use it. It's another elderly lady who's been disabled people who've been put on the fifth floor. And um, she's in the same situation as well. Got a pendant. I haven't got a phone. Every time you talk to Barrett, Barrett's tell us nothing to do with him, nothing to do with them, it's doing much follow in, it's doing much follow in, nothing to do with them, it's doing with Barrett's. So, but it's funny. So they're just strange. passing it from one, one to the yeah, other, basically. Yeah, and not yeah. getting any answers from anyone. No, no, no. But you've got quite a lot of disabled and mothers who have missed a lot, and all our queries are being ignored and not answered to. I mean, I went for this stick the other day because the lift was broken last week, Thursday. One lift was broken. The other one was working, but the ceiling had come down and it looked like it would fall on someone's head. Wow. My son has autism, so he thought that the lift was going to fall down on him and he wouldn't get in it. So I had to go two flights of stairs, which caused aggravated my fibromyalgia. Yeah. When I reported it, found it home to make a point and seen this all week, I've not said anything. So when I went mad and told them I reported to the Ombudsman and get a sister involved, all of a sudden they came down to fix the lift. But the one that's with the thing hanging down, they just pushed it up for the time being. It's so they, they, they start work at five in the morning and they work through until about 10 o'clock at night. Jesus. So like, I've, j I've just been informed that, that five o'clock start in the morning. Five o'clock, this noise starts. I'm surprised these people haven't had a fucking um, nervous breakdown already. Yeah, shocking. Absolutely shocking. I'm worn out just looking at them all. Right, well you may have seen us earlier having a bit of a moan about the fact that loaded up loads of shit onto the path and we approached Barrett and the workers and pointed out that people were having to walk 
on the roads in front of heavy plant machinery that was driving backwards and forwards because the path was chocker. As you can see now, the path is perfectly clear. So, you know, it shouldn't take members of the public to have to keep coming back to these guys and saying, look, you're blocking the paths. Um, but under, the, on this circ under this occasion, because we were filming and, um, you know, because we had quite a few people with us, they have literally moved all this stuff off the path, which, um, you know, it's a start, but it should never have been there in the first place. Anyway, I'll give you a little bit more about this later on. Right, yeah. We actually threatened them. Well, they don't do anything we? before the school holidays, they're in big trouble. That's why they delayed it. Now, when they take that wall down, and they're going to spend a lot of time putting that road in, yeah. that's for the sully tanks and to the work. And they've said that they will replace it back. We know that they're not going to do it because they haven't done it previously. But we also know that when the sales office gets moved, the reason why, for me being cynical, they want to move it from where it is on the arc yeah. into there yeah, is yeah. because it then gives them the passageway yeah, yeah, from the Cool Oak Lane straight yeah. into, into the back of the building mm -hmm. site. Yeah. So they can either use that as the road to get in for no, everybody else, or they can use it because don't, don't bet your bottom dollar. Because they'll open up that gate, won't they? That, yeah, all that, that gate that goes that across. So they're supposed to be making a construction oh, uh, a bridge. Okay. You remember the construction bridge? Oh, yes. A footbridge. Yes. 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 So, if you, if you were to say something to Boris Johnson now and Barrett Holmes, like especially Boris Johnson, what would it be? Fuck off. Fuck off and die. I think that's about right, don't you? 